Hey guys, I wanted to talk about East Lynn. Um, I have two kids. You might hear noises of the TV in the background or the other ones running around with the cheese stick. It's my life. But the question I want to talk about today about this book is, is Mr. Carlisle innocent? Now here is the backstory a little bit. Um, Mr. Carlisle married Isabel. Um, made her his wife and a few years later, I think it's like five or six years later maybe, she runs off with another man and leaves him. If you read the book, you know that she regrets this decision. She feels awful about it. She knows she makes the wrong decision. And there's lots of things that lead up to her making that decision that are just so frustrating. I am a married woman. I am 32 years old. And there's a lot about this book that goes on, there's a lot about this book that goes on behind the scenes that was really thought provoking for me. So, so the book and the characters in the book kind of paint Mr. Carlyle as the innocent party, as in he didn't deserve his wife to run away, that he is a pillar of society, that he's a great man, um, that he did nothing wrong. And I really want to talk about this today because I don't think that's the truth. I think he did do a lot of things wrong in his marriage. And while his wife Isabel is um, also a guilty party because she did willingly walk away from the marriage and leave with another man and have his baby eventually, she is not as guilty as I think most people would assume. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is Mr. Carlisle, when he married Isabel, he did not learn her love language. If you don't know, there's this book called The Love Languages. Um, it's a modern book, but he did not learn how to show his wife love, how to speak her language, how to make her feel loved. So in a part the second, going from home, um, it's on page 165 for me. Um, it says, Mr. Carlisle, demonstrative affection, shown so greatly, hold on, my child can't get the cheese stick out. Look, look, I got it out for you, there you go. It's almost, it's almost eaten, you gotta hurry. Um, so she says, Mr. Carlisle's demonstrative affection, shown so greatly for her in the first 12 months or so of their married life, had subsided into calmness. Is it not a similar result arrived at by every husband that the church ev ever made one with woman? It was not that his love had faded, but th that time and custom had wrought their natural effects. Look at the children with their toys, a boy with his new drum, a girl with a new doll. Are not the playthings kissed, hugged, and clasped in arms and never put down? Did ever playthings seem like them? Are not all other things neglected or submitted to unwillingly? The reading lessons, the sports, the daily works, even the pudding at dinner, while the new toy is in, it's all in all. And then it goes on and just um, for a little bit, but the main point that I wanted to read was, do not we all, man and woman, become indifferent to our toys when we hold them securely in possession? So he's calling, or the, so this author is a woman and she's calling Isabel a toy, in, in effect. Um, so those, in the first year of her marriage, Isabel felt very loved by her husband's tender affection, but he has stopped showing that. And the book seems to make it sound like that's normal, but um, my daughter is now shaking the camera. It's not normal, because it says, Lady Isabel did not understand the even matter, the quiet calmness into which her husband's once passionate love had subsided and in her fanciful jealousy, she attributed it to the influence Barbara held upon his memory. She looked for the little tender episodes of daily life. She would fain have had him hang over a chair as she sang and draw her face to his and feel his kisses on her lips as when she first came a wife to East Lynn. So he, in their six years of marriage, has not learned how to show Isabel love and that is a big problem, guys. And that is my first point that I put against Mr. Carlisle and um, one of the things that I attribute his guilt. So the second point that I wanted to bring up 
is that Mr. Carlyle did not learn to read Isabel's nonverbal cues. Um, and the example I have from the book is when she does go to him and she asks for his sister to please move out. Um, he goes to the sister, says, please move out. An argument ensues and everything because Mr. Carlyle lives with his sister and his wife, which is also another thing that he should not have done. Uh, Becky, you have to stop. Come here. Cute Becky joining for a video. Um, she then rescinds that because she is a very meek, very quiet, very peacemaker type of person. And it's easy to step on a peacemaker unintentionally. I do not think Mr. Carlisle was trying to control his wife or not to make her happy. However, when you're married to a peacemaker, and my husband is a peacemaker, it's very easy for them to just tell you what you want to hear. And you have to really work with them and tenderly love them and be thinking. You have to be thinking about what they want before they're going to tell you what they want because a peacemaker is not going to tell you what they want until they're very angry. My third point is going to require a lot of thought. So Isabel was taught to be beautiful and taught to be admired by man all her life. She had everything done for her by her father. Um, and then he died and then she was quickly married again. <clears throat> like I said, not only does she have the quiet nature of a peacemaker, she was reared in seclusion and taught as a lady that her only real purpose in life is to be beautiful and to be loved and adored. On page 142 in the chapter, Death or Life, more timid and more sensitive by nature than many would believe or can imagine, reared in seclusion more simply and quietly than falls to the general lot of peers daughters and completely inexperienced, Isabel was unfit to battle with the world and totally unfit to battle with Miss Carlyle, um, the unmarried sister that lives. So she was taught all of her life that she needs to be beautiful, she needs to submit, she needs to be beautiful, she needs to submit. So when her husband seems to stop paying attention to her, and here comes this attractive man that she was already attracted to before she married, paying her all this sort of flattery, attention, and everything, and she did not have the intelligence to recognize um, Francis as the narcissist that he was. She did not have any of that intelligence. Um, of course she's going to be completely swept away, especially when he lies to her and creates this whole facade about her husband cheating on her with Barbara Hare. So that is my third strike against Mr. Carlyle. Um, the fourth and final point that I have to make is that Mr. Carlyle does not go after his wife when she leaves. He just completely abandons her as well. I mean, she leaves with another man. But he could have gone after her. And I was thinking about this. If you read Bleak House, Lady Deadlock, or her husband, when Lady Deadlock leaves, and I know it's a different kind of circumstance, but it's also kind of similar and involves shame um, and babies outside of wedlock and stuff. Um, but Lester, or I don't know how you say his name, but he immediately gets people looking for her, says full pardon, full forgiveness, tell her to come home, I love her, I miss her. And Mr. Carlyle could have done the same thing to Isabel. He could have said, look, I know that we've had a really awful thing happen, but I love you and you're welcome to come home and we can work through this. No matter the shame, no matter the humiliation, he had that option. And it's not even, he just gets the letter from her and then changes his daughter's name to Lucy, well it's her middle name, but forbids her name being spoken and carries on with his life. Yes, he's heartbroken. It talks a lot about how heartbroken he is, but he could have gone after her. He could have. And she would have come home and they could have been happy. So that's East Lynn today talking about is Mr. Carlisle innocent or not? And I do not think he is completely innocent in the affair and the tragedy that happened with him and his first wife. I'll see you guys later. Bye.